Today, pressure, retail spending stagnates despite growth in wealth. Hello again, Smart and North from Digital Finance and Analytics. Well, in this post covering finance and property news, the ABS released more data on Thursday, from which we can deduce that despite some headline growth in spending, thanks to the Taylor Swift events, underlying growth in retail turnover was up only 0.1% in trend terms after a period of higher volatility from November through to January, and underlying spending therefore has stagnated. This is despite a growth in paper wealth, which was up by 7.8% over the past year, thanks to a large boost from rising house prices and domestic and overseas share markets. But we also saw a rise in household borrowing, driven by continued demand for housing amid strong population growth and a seasonal boost from spring housing market sales, which also drove household borrowing in the December quarter. Under the hood, therefore, we continue to see pressure on many households whose wages are not keeping up with living costs. Inflation, as discussed yesterday, remains too high, while the asset distribution across households is becoming further distorted between the haves and the have-nots. Many consumers are clearly struggling under the weight of soft income growth, mortgage repayments, rents, income taxes and overall cost of living pressures. So looking first at the retail trade figures, the ABS said Australian retail turnover rose 0.3% season adjusted in February, following a rise of 1.1% in January and a fall of 2.1% in December 2023. Seven sold out Taylor Swift concerts in Sydney and Melbourne boosted retail spending this month, they said, with over 600,000 Swifties flocking to these events. This led to increased spending on clothing, merchandise, accessories and dining out. Looking past the temporary and one-off impact of the Taylor Swift concerts, though, underlying growth in retail turnover was up only 0.1% in trend terms. And after a period of higher volatility from November to January, underlying spending has stagnated, the ABS said. Clothing, footwear and personal accessories retailing was up to 4.2% and departmental stores up 2.3%. They saw the largest increases in February. Fashion and accessory retailers told us offerings of Taylor Swift inspired outfits and related do-it-yourself accessories added to turnover in February, the ABS said. Cafes, restaurants and takeaway food services were up 0.5%. They had a more modest rise with an increase in spending also linked to the Taylor Swift concerts. This followed a 1.4% rise in January, which was boosted by large sporting events. Another rise in turnover for catering services, cafes, restaurants and takeaway businesses showed that consumers are still prepared to spend at large social events as seen last month with the big crowds at the tennis and cricket, the ABS said. But turnover fell in household retail goods down 0.8% and other retailing down 0.4% and food retailing down 0.1%, which reflected weaker underlying retail spending. Now, given that food prices are still overall rising by at least 3.5%, it means that households are buying less in value terms than value or switching to cheaper product ranges. And household goods inflation has fallen away, so in absolute terms, the value spent continues to drop. Retail turnover rose in most jurisdictions, with Victoria up 0.7% and New South Wales up 0.6%, had the largest rises, with Queensland recording the largest fall down 0.5%. So New South Wales and Victoria benefited from the influx of visitors in February and increased spending from local concert goers, the ABS said. Turning to the wealth effect, using data from the National Accounts finance and wealth series to December 2023, household wealth rose for the fifth straight quarter up 2.8% or $419 billion in the December quarter, according to the ABS. Total household wealth was $15.7 trillion in the December quarter, which was 7.8% or $1.1 trillion higher than a year ago. Residential land and dwellings was the largest driver of the rise, contributing 1.2 percentage points to quarterly growth in the household wealth. The ABS said household wealth saw a large boost from rising values of assets this quarter, 
Household prices continued to grow significantly, as did domestic and overseas share markets. Share market growth over the December quarter drove superannuation assets to increase 3.9% or $140 billion, and households' direct ownership of shares and other equity to increase 3.8% or $51.8 billion. So this contributed to a combined 1.3 percentage points to quarterly growth in household wealth. Total deposits increased by 2%, and transferable deposit account balances rose $15.3 billion, including offset accounts, which rose $8.9 billion. Other deposit accounts, which include term deposits and savings accounts, rose $17 billion. And total demand for credit was $105.1 billion in the December quarter, the strongest demand since September quarter of 2022. That was driven by households at $33.2 billion, private non-financial businesses at $29.2 billion, the Commonwealth government at $17.7 billion, and state and local governments at $16.5 billion. Household borrowing reflected continued demand for housing amid strong population growth, they said. A seasonal boost from spring housing market sales also drove household borrowing in the December quarter. Finally, debt issuance from governments and the private sectors was strong, despite high interest rates, as Treasury bonds were issued during the quarter, which to help fund Commonwealth government investment in infrastructure and other policy priorities, much of which were purchased by offshore investors, while banks issued bonds offshore as they continued to raise additional funds following the maturity of the initial allowance of the term funding facility. Those are the ultra-cheap funds which the RBA offered the banks through COVID and which are now having to be replaced by more expensive funding options by the way that they are pressurising bank margins. So we can see that some of the pressures on the economy here with growing and higher costs of debt offset by some asset value rises, at least on paper, but also pressure on cash flows for many. The problem with the ABS data sets is that they don't really separate the sheep from the goats, as it were, with some households enjoying record returns on stocks, deposits and superannuation, plus positive home price movements, while other households are paying more for housing, either thanks to bigger mortgage repayments or rents. But the fact that overall retail spending has gone sideways, despite massive migration and strong inflation, probably gives a better read on the true state of things. One reason why the recent RBA analysis of just 175,000 households with mortgages understating the problem, struggling to make repayments, compared with Roy Morgan's recent data, which suggests that it's closer to 1.6 million households, a figure which, by the way, is much closer to my own analysis. And of course, we have millions of those in the rental sector paying more because rents on average are 7% higher than a year ago. But again, some are paying much more than this. So, standing back, for those who want to see the ABS series and do give us some clues as to what's really going on, the fault lines are there for those who want to see them. But I note that many economists prefer to look the other way. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.